the battle is over you. You see, Satan can't do anything to God. He can't hurt God physically. He can't hurt God spiritually, mentally. He can't do anything to God. God's too powerful. I mean, man, God created Satan. Not like Satan is today, but he created Satan as Lucifer. It speaks about it in the Bible. Satan was uh, uh, this brilliant creation that God did. He was like, uh, uh, some theologians say he was like the leader of all the worship in heaven. He was this beautiful angel, a model of perfection, perfect in beauty, the scripture says. His name is Lucifer. But then Lucifer had pride in his heart. He saw all the angels, everybody worshiping God, and he wanted to be worshipped. He thought he should sit on the throne. So there's this great battle in heaven, the Bible describes it. It didn't take long, God just crushed him and threw him out of heaven. But see, a third of the angels that were ever created, a third of the angels followed Lucifer. It speaks about it in God's word in Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah and the book of Ezekiel. A third of the angels followed Lucifer. And when God kicked Lucifer out of heaven, it says his tail swept a third of the stars with him. That's symbolic of saying angels. So now a third of the angels of heaven are now demons, and they work for Satan, and they're here to steal, kill, and destroy you. Because God can't, because Satan can't do anything to God, where's Satan going to attack? He's going to attack God's most prized possession, right? That's the only way he can get to God. That's the only way he can hurt God is to attack his most prized possession. His most prized possession is who? Knows it? He's out to steal, kill, and destroy you. I veered way off of my notes, but that's okay. I wanted to explain to you the spiritual war that's taking place. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that at Breakthrough Tree. In fact, I think we're going to have one April 25th. And uh, I've called several places. I've only got two weekends open from here to the end of May. So April 25th is one of those. I think we're going to do it right here. And we're going to stay on site, even though I like to go away for these. We're going to do it right here on Saturday. And we're going to spend all Saturday together. And we're going to go through the Breakthrough Retreat and the curriculum. And you're going to do an inventory and just go through your life and get everything cleaned out and get rid of it. And uh, I've, seen, I've seen lives change through this retreat. I've seen entire youth ministries change to this retreat when I've gone and done it for other youth ministries and other youth groups. So April 25th, in fact, Marge, will you make a sign-up sheet? I'm going to let you guys start signing up tonight because we'll need to know how many people are coming. But it is awesome to see lives change in such a radical way. And it's awesome the teaching and the training. And man, you'll just spiritually, you'll be so much further ahead. Man, you'll begin to sense God's presence. You'll begin to hear God's voice as so many have when they get their lives just cleaned out and cleaned up. That's what breakthrough is all about. All right, so the T was time. Remember what's our acrostic? Taco. All right, so T is time. You got to spend time with God. God loves, desires that relationship with you. So let's go to the A. Let's go to the A. The A is attention. Attention slash listening. God wants your attention. All right? One of the ways we give God attention is through prayer. Prayer is, is, a, is, is, the, is the language to where we communicate with God. God communicates with you through God's word. He may speak to you. He may have a vision. He may have a dream. I don't know. He may just impress on your heart. The Holy Spirit may just impress something on your heart. And you'll know it's from God. But the way we communicate with God, we communicate with Him is through prayer. We worship Him. We honor Him. We worship uh, which is another way we communicate. But I want to talk about prayer briefly because it's that it, it's prayer makes your life and your Christian life go so much quicker and so much faster to maturity. You've got to have a prayer time with the Lord. All right, so that's talking. God wants your attention. Part of that attention is prayer. So when you pray, I'm going to give you some guidelines. First, don't be fake when you pray. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 says this. And now about prayer. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. You guys know what a hypocrite is? Somebody who says he's something that he's not. Or somebody who says one thing and does another. Hypocrite. And now about prayer, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who pretend piety by praying publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. So they want everybody to think that they're holy. They want everybody to think, oh man, I'm this incredible follower of Jesus and, 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 and we are so connected, man, I'm going to pray all over in front of people and I'm going to act real spiritual, but in their hearts they're dead. In their hearts they're dead. That's what the scripture is talking about. So don't be fake with God. Just be open and honest with God. Man, if you were feeling in the dumps that day, then in your prayer time, you just tell God all about your day and how you're feeling in the dumps. 
Because that's what God wants. He just wants openness and honesty in your relationship. Next one, be yourself. Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. But when you pray, go away by yourself, all alone. And shut the door behind you and pray to your Father secretly. God wants you to get away just like Jesus got away and went up into the hills and went out into the wilderness <coughs> to pray. We've got to get away. We've got to get away from the distractions of the day. The distractions of people, the distractions of tests, and the distractions of homework, and all this stuff that goes into our lives. It doesn't mean you don't do your homework. You do your homework. But it means you set that time aside where you can get away. Whether it's 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half hour, we just spend time in prayer with God. Let me tell you something. 70%, 80% of prayer is listening, not speaking. Sometimes we just got to listen and allow God to speak to us. Sometimes we get stuck in a prayer and we only get like four minutes in it because we just start praying and say, God, I need this, I need this, I need this. Will you help me with this and that and that? And God's happy to do that. God wants to know your needs. But prayer is so much more than just requests to God. In a relationship, when you talk on the phone, and you talk back and forth, you hear, you listen, and you speak, and you give each other advice, and you give each other wisdom, and, and you love one another, encourage one another. It's the same thing with prayer, with God. All right? Have it. Just have an openness with God. So be yourself. Don't try to impress others. Is your next blank. Matthew chapter 6, verse 7. Don't recite the same prayer over and over as the heathen do. Who think prayers are answered only by repeating them again and again. So don't try to impress others with your your fancy words or your big prayers or your big statements or, or anything like that. Man, just pray. Be open, be honest, be real, be authentic before God. That's all God wants. Don't try to impress God. We just have don't try to impress others. Don't try to impress God either. Remember, your Father knows exactly what you need even before you ask Him. Don't try to impress God in your prayer time. Just be authentic. Be real with God. And spend the time. You've got to spend the time in prayer. Consistency is the seed in taco. Consistency. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 2 through 3 says, Guard my words as your most precious possession. Guard my words as your most precious possession. This right here, God's word, Scripture says, it should be your most precious possession. It goes on to say, write them down and also keep them deep within your heart. Psalm 119, 11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Man, this is your most precious position, possession. Hide this in your heart. Know this. Know God's word. Let it sink in deep inside. When this begins to become real in you, you start living it out. You know what's in here? There's all kinds of stuff in here. There's incredible stuff to live out in God's Word. So consistency is so important. And I'll be honest with you, I missed my devotional time and prayer time on Monday. And uh, I hated it. I hated it. I've been, uh, uh, I've been really trying to put fasting into my life and praying again. And I missed it one day. And I can always tell when I miss spending time with God. Hey guys, good. Tuesday night, I did.